everyone. Welcome to episode number 652 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. My podcast guest this week is Craig Kamerman from Odoo, and we're talking all about the next generation of soldier communication systems. We investigate the biggest trends in these types of designs, and how Odoo's smaller, lighter, faster connector solutions can help solve the challenges inherent in these types of applications. Also this week, I check out a new rocket fuel developed at the University of Albany that could revolutionize rocket fuel as we know it and make space flights more efficient. So without further ado, please welcome Craig to Fish Fry. Hi, Craig. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. It's a pleasure to be here today. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about soldier communication systems with Odoo's smaller, lighter, faster connector solutions. So, Craig, first, what kind of trends are you seeing in this space? And how do you see these trends evolving over time? From my perspective, the soldier and their systems, which allow them to operate in a multitude of environments, has dramatically changed over the last, let's say, 15 years with all of the electronics added to their kit. At the center of these electronics is interconnectivity. Of course, the trend has always been smaller, lighter, and faster, but we are seeing new technologies which enable this emerging at an ever-increasing pace. In the past, the soldier communication systems focused on reliable technology first and foremost over any other aspect. Today, the landscape has incorporated many commercial technologies to enable better fidelity, such as the trend for high-speed data transfer in a ruggedized package. This enables our soldiers to have the best access to real-time data that is secure wherever they may be in the field. In the end, the speed that the information is given and received can ultimately save lives. Craig, what kind of solutions do you think could help solve these issues? With respect to soldier communications and furthermore, the broader soldier kit, the speed to market is ultimately the driver of adoption. As we move further into the future, the manufacturers supplying these products need to have robust and agile supply chains in order to meet the demands of the warfighter in total. The overall adoption of commercial high-speed technologies into more robust and ruggedized form factors enables the soldier to not only have an advantage in combat, but also in training. Today, we are at an inflection point where the soldier has an ever-increasing amount of kit they need to carry with them in order to perform their duties. We see that the need for smaller and more efficient electronics also reduces the overall weight of the kit they need to carry. The message we receive from our customers and the broader user community is that a soldier needs to be able to operate for 72 hours continuously in order for any equipment to be feasible for use in the field. As it stands now, the battery technology is ultimately the limiting factor, but that's changing rapidly. As an ecosystem, the more power efficient and smaller packaging the electronics can be, the easier it will be to incorporate them into the future soldier kit. Okay, so Craig, talk to me about Odoo's smaller, lighter, faster connectors. Weight reduction and space efficiency play an important role in these connectors, right? Talk to me about the wide range of benefits that they bring to these kinds of designs. Odoo has been creating small form factor connectors for nearly two decades, and they've been used in soldier systems for, let's say, the past 15 years. The introduction of our AMC and AMC high density portfolio has been a game changer for the interconnectivity of devices in a miniaturized package. Currently, when you look at the total kit the soldier uses in the field, Odoo has been part of many designs from headsets, push to talk devices, soldier hubs, radios, and more. Our AMC high density portfolio has continuously been updated to meet the demands of the future soldier. For instance, We've incorporated new plating technologies to further increase resistance to corrosion in the field, up to 500 hours. 
Additionally, we have newer insert arrangements that continue to push the boundaries of the amount of power and data we can have in a small package. From a benefits perspective, because Odoo has been keeping the overall housing sizing the same, the weight increase is minimal while the technological advancement has been dramatic. In addition to the standard offerings, Odoo creates bespoke solutions for many customers that incorporate bleeding edge technologies into our partner's equipment. Said differently, the acronym typically used is SWAP, size, weight, and power. And Odoo is continuously developing solutions for the marketplace that have smaller size and weight while increasing the amount of power and data that can be transmitted. Following my previous comments, when we look at the total ecosystem of the products of our interconnect solutions and which they're designed for, the soldier can become more agile with less weight while still increasing their ability for force multiplication. Today, Odoo is working closer than ever with the system manufacturers to create and provide solutions that are more integrated to further increase the efficiency and minimize the overall package size to the soldier. So Craig, can you share any specific application examples of these connectors in real world designs? Uh, Sure, from a commercial perspective, we even see some trickle down from the military side of our business into the commercial space. So we've taken our communications equipment technology into an ever increasingly small package for use even on stage by your favorite music artists at concert venues for their in-ear monitors. On the soldier side, we've been incorporated into many of the headset, radio, and push-to-talk designs that are currently in the marketplace today, but we're also working with our partners for their future designs. I have to respect our non-disclosure agreement, so I'm not gonna name any specific customers here. However, Odoo is involved in nearly every next generation system that's going to be coming to market over the next year or so and beyond with respect to the soldier system. Fantastic. All right, Craig, it's time for your off the cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there. What would you have? I'm from Maryland originally, and my favorite food is crab cakes. If I could have anything, it's a local delicacy and You can't get them like we make them in Maryland anywhere else. I love it. That sounds awesome. Well, Craig, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it, Amelia. Thank you. Have you heard about the revolutionary new rocket fuel developed by a team of researchers at the University of Albany? All right, my friends, time to get your chemical engineering hats on because we're going in. (laughs) So what makes this rocket fuel so much better than previous fuel technologies? At the heart of it is a new synthesized compound called manganese deboride, which is over 20% more energetic by weight and about 150% more energetic by volume compared to the aluminum currently used in solid rocket boosters. And even though it's a very energetic fuel, it is also very safe and will only combust when it encounters an ignition agent like kerosene. Now, manganese deboride is part of a class of compounds that has been thought to have unusual properties. But exploring what these properties can do has been, well, limited because we really haven't been able to produce them and we haven't been able to define their molecular structure either. Well, until now, when a team of researchers at the University of Albany have done all of that. Okay, so the University of Albany PhD student Joseph Doan explains the challenge of exploring these kinds of compounds like this. Deborides first started getting attention in the 1960s. Since these initial looks, new technologies are allowing us to actually synthesize chemical compounds that were only hypothesized to exist. Knowing what we do about the elements on the periodic table 
we suspected that manganese deboride would be structurally asymmetrical and unstable. Factors which together would make it highly energetic. But until recently, we couldn't test it because it couldn't be made. Successfully synthesizing pure manganese deboride is an exciting achievement in and of itself. And now we can test it experimentally and discover new ways to put it to use. So, step one, synthesize manganese deboride. Step two, define its molecular structure. So, University of Albany PhD student Gregory John was able to build computer models to visualize manganese deboride's molecular structure. These models revealed something critical, a subtle skew known as a deformation, which gives the compound its high potential energy. He explains the issue like this. Our model of manganese deboride compound looks like a cross section of an ice cream sandwich, where the outer cookies are made of a lattice structure comprised of interlocking hexagons. When you look at it closely, you can see that the hexagons aren't perfectly symmetrical. They're a little skewed. This is what we call deformation. By measuring the degree of deformation, we can use that measure as a proxy to determine the amount of energy stored in the material. That skew is where the energy is stored. So, is better rocket fuel the end of the road for these boron-based compounds? Absolutely not. Associate Professor of Chemistry Alan Chen explains the future like this. There's this consensus among chemists that boron-based compounds should have unusual properties that make them behave unlike any other existing compounds. There's an ongoing quest to figure out what those properties and behaviors are. This sort of pursuit is at the heart of materials chemistry, where creating harder, stronger, more extreme materials requires forging brand new chemicals. This is what the Young Lab is doing, with findings that could improve rocket fuel, catalytic converters, and even processes for recycling plastics. Super cool! Right? <laughs> so, if you'd like more information about Odoo, their military connectors, or more information about this new energetic rocket fuel, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into LinkedIn, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn. And we are also on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash EE Journal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, hosted by me, and our animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, -E at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of October 3rd, 2025, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.